And uh, I've got some statistics here in a minute that tell you just how much Sydney's expected to grow because the, the current state government um, released the Sydney Metropolitan Discussion Paper earlier this year that, that talked about that we need to find, or our population in Sydney over, over the next 20 years or so, is expected to grow from a current population of 4.2 million people to 5.6 million people by 2031. So that's 1.4 million people sharing our city with us today. And if we don't do anything to plan for those people, if, if we don't provide houses for those people, and we don't provide transport and infrastructure for those people, well, we're really going to have a problem and our quality of life that we know and enjoy as Sydney siders, let alone what we have out here in Hillshire, is certainly going to be uh, challenged. To meet that population growth, the state government estimates that we need to find 600,000 more jobs and we need to find 560,000 more houses and we've all heard the housing debate about affordability. For a decade or more, we've not been able to keep pace with the demand for housing putting upward pressure on uh, housing affordability. Uh, successive governments, so I've got a career of 25 years in local government, have all wrestled with the challenges to how you free up and, uh, and make housing not only meet supply but also affordable. So there's some other sobering st statistics that I'd like to talk to you, and these come from the census. Each household in Sydney, we have about 2.7 people in it. In the Hillshire, we have 3.1 people in each household on average. Each household in Sydney, and this is fairly sobering, averages 1.6 cars. And in the hills, that's a staggering 2.1 cars. So for our share of this uh, 600,000 new jobs and 560,000 new homes, we've got to find up to 2031 about another 35,000 homes. And we've got to find around about 36,000 new jobs. You'll hear me talk about 47 or 48,000 new jobs, but that started in 2001. Now, across Sydney, that growth equates to about 900,000 more cars if we do nothing. If we find the housing for people and the, and the housing population remains the same, and even if we take the lower Sydney average, roughly a million more cars, how are we going to do it? How are we going to move around? How are we going to afford to be able to move around? Real challenges that, that we have to, uh, have to wrestle. Now, how have we done in the past? Well, previous governments have set policies whereby they've uh, opened greenfield new release areas, and we've got plenty of those in the Hillshire and across the border in Blacktown. We do it by uh, converting some of our existing communities to higher density forms of living and you've seen evidence of that around our town centres, Castle Hill, Borkham Hills, um, Rouse Hill, the new, new Rouse Hill and, and more recently Carlingford. But we also can do it by taking advantage of good infrastructure and uh, we're going to hear a little bit about it in a little while from Tom but we've got a very great opportunity in the North West Rail Link to be able to find houses and find jobs close to those transport links and the real challenge is, is, to, is to work out how do we do that in a way that contributes to quality of life, so we don't want to lose our values, does find those houses, does find those jobs, capitalises on the investment, the state government's $8 billion investment in the railway, so that we can hopefully move around our shire and move around our city better than we can today. I think given I've just got the five minute bell, I'll finish with this. They're coming people. That population growth is real. Nothing short of a cat catastrophe is going to stop that. What we've got to be really clever about is how do we accommodate them? Can we just afford to go in new, new release areas where cars predominate? We've already shown we can't afford that. We haven't got the road networks that we want or desire. So what are we going to do different? And my message is, is we've got to think about how do we use this railway to appropriately house our new, new residents, appropriately put jobs close to those transport links, capitalise on that investment, and the, the dividend that we'll get will maintain our environment, will maintain our quality of life, but, but importantly, will maintain our highly prized single low-density suburbs that we've all 
grown to enjoy. So with that, I'll leave you with those thoughts and those challenges. Thanks very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much.